Admittedly, it's been a while since I shot a video, and the garage heater smart, uh, I think I called it the smart things heater, or connected shop, seemed to get well received, and so um, not everyone has a full home automation system, so I found something the other day, and I think it was actually cool enough, so I'm going to show you guys what it is, uh, give you a bit of a walkthrough. Um, on the previous video, Ryan had asked me for the schematic, so let me give a quick talk through. This, our 220 volt circuit, um, Ryan, you may want to pause this and take a screenshot. Um, L1, L2, those are our two lines, and those go into the 220 side of the contactor. And then from the top side, those go to the L1, L2 designations on your heater. Uh, the grounds really just connect up. I actually brought them in via the box, but uh, not necessary. And then at the 110 side, so I've used an outlet as an example. It doesn't have to be an outlet. But it goes from there to this one side of the switch. And then the other side goes to one side of the contactor, and then the other side of the contactor goes uh, back to the neutral. So that keeps the circuit that when the switch is flipped, uh, completes the entire circuit, the contactor closes and the heater gets turned on. So let's talk about this unit here. Um, someone actually on Garage Central mentioned this to me, and I'm trying this out trying it out in my house first. And it is a TH16 sensor. I think it was a whopping $8. And it comes with this relative temperature and humidity sensor. Plugs in the side, so that's actually one of the um, cool advantages. What I usually do with these, at least I bought five or six to try, I take one of those basic 110 volt electrical cords. I cut it, probably should have cut it longer. Um, basically run my neutrals to one side, uh, load, and then my, uh, that's not right, I run a neutral and a hot, and then I run a neutral and a hot out. And so manually you can operate the switch by pushing the button on it. The cool thing is, if you don't have smart things it's not really a problem. If you do have smart things, um, it's even less of a problem if you look at some of the options out there. So here you can see my switch. Uh, I still have it called Sonos switch. It's 71 degrees, 53% humidity. And so I have some, oh, pardon me. So let's go to the home automation routine. So my sensor is a the Sonos switch, which is that temperature humidity, and then it will actually open or close it. And so right now I've got it set to has to be warmer than eight degrees. Let's go to it has to be above uh, seventy three. And then there's options with motion, emergency times, things like that. So I'm going to click OK. And what we should see in a second, it's going to take a second for it to pull. Again. Um, but as soon as it does, we should see on this device that it pulls. We can get a, the live stream. One thing is it pulls every one second. So it's not, or one, I believe it's one, one minute, sorry, not one second. So often it'll take a while. It really means that you're going to be on for a, a second. But if you look, the heat on sensor command, a couple times it's been turned off uh, earlier when I was playing with it, making sure everything for the video was good enough. Obviously, you can always hit the button to turn it on. This is a good bit cheaper than those GE switches, uh, like I used in the previous example. And uh, actually, Sonoff has some pretty cool um, options. So let's take a look why this isn't playing well. Where? 
are set to increment every one minute, so we should be good. So it's been pulling humidity a lot more frequently, but we should be due for a temperature sensor in temperature any second now. And I've used this for a couple things. I've used this, um, sometimes I've used it with a contactor. I've used it um, more recently. I think I had a heater in my daughter's room. So if the temperature went down, it would kick on just because it wasn't the smartest. It's pretty funny as uh, every other time I tried this, it was almost instant. This is when it becomes embarrassing. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the sign off web page. So it's made by a company called IT Lead. Uh, it's a TH10 or a TH16. The 10 and 16 is the amperage difference. And so you can see, you can actually buy these on Amazon. Uh, the 10 amp, 750, 16 amp, 830, 860. I pretty much always buy that, and then the temperature sensor is 350, or the temperature humidity sensor. Um, and they, they give you some of the example, they show you what it looks like. And then if you use nothing but their app, if you don't have a smart home, um, that's what it looks like right there. Um, and so it's got the ability to do scenes very quickly and easily. So that's a itlead.cc. If I bought them again, I'd probably actually buy them from Amazon. I think they would ship quicker. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so there. And if you look, uh, basically it turned itself on. Eventually, I think what had happened is it had lost connection. You can hear my dog in the background. And then if we were to come in, wrong thing. If we were to go into our smart app, we'll change it back to seven degrees. Then typically it'll take again up to a minute and it will turn itself off. So I'm going to stop there, especially because my dog is itching to go outside. Um, it does take about a minute, usually. Uh, and I was hoping it would have behaved and worked, but I guess when the camera's rolling, it doesn't, doesn't always uh, go as you plan. So it does work, I promise. Um, and these things are really cheap, so... If anyone has any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best. Thanks. Bye.